Um, yeah. All right. So uh, thank you for everybody for attending our workshop today. Um, this is a workshop on how to maintain long distance relationships. Uh, this is friendships in Circle K. Um, my name is Bill Trong. I am from the California, Nevada, Hawaii district. My pronouns are he, him, his. Uh, I am currently serving as on the district, uh, the CNH district uh, and, uh, family and foundations committee as uh, the Golden Gate liaison, division liaison. I currently go to California State University East Bay as a computer science major. And actually a really, really fun fact is that I collect Starbucks mugs uh, because one of my friends actually reminded me that uh, he has my Starbucks mug um, earlier today. Uh, I, I collect Starbucks mugs, so I bought this mug when I went to uh, when I went to uh, CKX last year from Disney Disney um, in Magic Kingdom. So I bought the Magic Kingdom mug. I bought the Orlando mug as well. And then a bunch of my committee members from last year also gave me um, Starbucks mugs. So I collect those. Um, but yeah, that's my fun fact. And I just want to also introduce my other two um, uh, workshop hosts, uh, Jordan Payton and Al Tibacon. Uh, they will introduce themselves as well. Jordan, you can go first. Hey, what's up? My name's Jordan. I'm um, from Kansas District. I'm the current governor. Um, pronounce she, her, hers. I study bioag systems engineering at Kansas State University. I'm a rising um, fifth year senior. Um, I think that's everything with my area. Oh, my fun fact is I set my oven on fire making pho once. So that's a story for another time if you want to ask, but yeah, I'll pass it on to Al. Hey guys, I'm Al Tipicon. Uh, pronouns he and his. I am a part of the Kentucky, Tennessee district where I serve as the Lieutenant Governor for the Appalachian region. And I attend East Tennessee State University where I'm majoring in microbiology and I'm pre-med. And I'm, I'll be a senior this year. And a fun fact is that I'm one of the uh, intramural champions at my school. Neat, all right, thank you. Uh, thank you, Al. Um, just a quick reminder before we start, um, if you want if, um, to please uh, mute your microphones while we are talking, just so that nothing like interrupts our workshop or like kind of you can hear like static feedback. So just make sure you might mute, mute your microphones and we can kind of have a smooth presentation of our, of our ideas. And um, yeah, so uh, we want to, I want to start first by uh, just sort of introducing like us as like a group. Uh, we all actually met at uh, CKX uh, 2018 in Chicago. Um, we were uh, we weren't all in the same team, so you guys have like team leaders and stuff like that. Uh, but we weren't all in the same team. We actually were at the same service site though um, for CKX 20, uh, 2018. Uh, and after the service was over, we all started kept on hanging out and explored Chicago together. Um, I mean, I guess it was kind of fate, but that we that we met. But um, also, it was very good coincidence. Uh, Joy and Al, you want to add anything? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I guess I would just say that it was kind of like our love of food that brought us together. Because like right after the servers project, we had to like pick what we wanted on like our deep dish pizza. So a couple of us actually sat together. And so like that kind of meal like brought us together, which is like crazy because, you know, food brings us together. But um, I'll let Al speak a little bit on like how he got involved. Mm -hmm. OK, um, well, CKIX Chicago, I was actually I was actually my very like first year in CKI at all. And I was a freshman and I had become uh, the the president like right after our charter president <laughs> so uh and then she just kind of like set things up for me and then all of a sudden i was being sent to chicago in the summer <laughs> um so i was definitely i was the only person from like kentucky tennessee going to chicago or ckx in general so i was like okay i'm for sure gonna be alone here but um luckily um the ohio district uh, adopted me <laughs> for, for that weekend so I was able to stay with them and they kept me like safe for the first few events and not lonely then the service like Jordan said um or like M. Bill said we were all met at the service site where afterwards when we had to go eat lunch we all just kind of sat at the same table because we had similar taste and yeah everything went on from there <laughs> yeah so and then we actually all got to meet up um or most of us did Get to meet up again at CKX last year in Disney World. I'm actually wearing this shirt right now from Disney World. Um, and it was like really fun. We still keep in touch and we still talk pretty often uh, amongst our groups. Um, so yeah, uh, just wanted to, so 
based off of that, the first thing we wanted to talk about in our workshop today is stepping out of your comfort zone. Joan, if you could go to the next slide for me. Um, so basically, it's just basically how to um, start the conversation and sort of making friends at uh, your respective events and stuff like that. Uh, because, you know, we all have been there where we're at Circle K events or just events in general, where it's like really hard to make conversation because you're like the only person there that you really know. And you don't know really a whole lot of people uh, outside of like maybe you and a couple of friends. Um, like when you look when you look around, you see a lot of new faces. It can be often it be intimidating to um, sort of try to make conversation with because they are foreign faces and you do not actually know them. Um, so basically, a couple of things that I like to do is I like to focus on you know finding phrases or conversation starters that like work and that really like. Uh, can help spark a conversation. Um, for example, I like to usually talk about things uh, regarding to their experience, like for example, hair, clothes, um, et cetera, et cetera. Last year at TKX, if anybody saw me at TKX last year, uh, I, was, I had blue, greenish hair. So that was kind of a talking point. Um, everybody was like, oh, commenting like, oh, Bill, you have very unique hair. I was like, very, I was like, oh, thank you. I like my, I like my hair too. Um, so people, so, uh, people, uh, found the courage to talk up to me, uh, to come up and talk to me about my hair. So, um, that's how we started talking to them. Uh, and then also other things you can talk about is stuff that you like. So like music, food, et cetera, et cetera. Like a quite, like, for example, you can talk to uh, somebody about like, oh, what kind of food do you like? Uh, like, for example, for me, I always like, I always like to ask especially if they're not from my area. I always like to ask, what kind of food places, what, should, what food places are your favorite in your area? Like for me, personally, I live, I live in a majorly Asian neighborhood. So I actually have a lot of like places like pho, I have like places like ramen, uh, Korean barbecue, et cetera, et cetera. A lot of Asian food that I like to uh, tell people that, like, oh yeah, that's like the kind of food I like to eat because it's really, really good. Uh, and then also because, you know, we are all in Circle K, just talk about your experiences in Circle K so far and like how you feel about it. So um, like, especially with new members, I like to ask, hey, you're in Circle K. What do you, what are you, what's your experience been like so far? Do you like it? Do you, uh, do you what do you enjoy the most about Circle K? Um, sometimes it's like really, really hard. Like, like ap after getting that initial um, conversation going, it's also really hard to like maintain those friendships. And it's like really uh, it's like especially like when you're in an environment where you don't know like i said that you, that you don't know anybody uh and that remember that if you're like like for example if you're at a circle k event uh you're all members of circle k so you already all ha already have something in common uh that you want to um do community service you want to change the world uh via service and stuff like that and you also have to remember that um just like me and you um we all started somewhere and that we all started off as that awkward little kid who um, didn't really know anybody, and now we are all members of Circle K, and we are all, we are friends, right? So yeah, so um, off of that, I kind of wanted to sort of open the entire room up for discussion a little bit, um, and just so how this is gonna work is I'm gonna there are discussion questions, uh, the two discussion questions on the slide right now. Have you ever been afraid to start a conversation in a quiet room? Or have you ever, and have you ever seen someone sitting alone and wanted to talk to them? So basically how this is gonna work is I'm gonna be, basically you guys can go to your participants and raise your hand. And basically if you raise your hand, I will probably call on you and ask you to unmute your mic and sort of share your thoughts on these discussion questions. So uh, not all at once, but if, if you would like to sort of discuss, uh, start discussing this, uh, th these discussion questions, you can, um, you can raise your hand and sort of give your two cents. Uh, I see Al, Al Prosco. You can go ahead and um, uh, share your thoughts. Okay, sweet. Hi, everyone. So when I got into this room, it was very quiet, and I started an icebreaker. <laughs> um, I feel like I tend to be that person who will walk into a room and talk to someone who really does not want to have a conversation, but then it sparks up a friendship, and I'm really grateful for that. And I see Efrain is messaging me <laughs> in the group chat. Efrain is my uh, CKI buddy for the social distancing buddies. And so we've maintained this long distance friendship based through that, which is really cool that I could just 
fill out a survey and meet a friend, a long-term friend. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you. <laughs> Glad to see you talking in here. Yeah, I also have other stories I want to share with you. I don't know if you can see me well. Okay. Hey, Frank, Let me... Frank, go ahead and go next. Frank, go ahead yeah, next. now I can start. Uh, yeah, I have a story. I remember when I was like in 11th grade, yes, of school, yes, uh, I was one of the popular characters in my school, but not that popular as the other ones who like to go in parties. I, I was only popular because I have high grades and, and I like it to speak to everyone. Yes. And then I met this girl. She was a little bit chubby and like an anime. I only talked with other person who was in another classroom on the research. And then I, I decided one day that, hey, I was going to talk to this girl. I'm going to know what, what she does uh, after school. And I'm going to make her feel more comfortable speaking to us in our classes. And so I did it, and I started she didn't want to uh, speak a lot with me, but then she revealed me that she loves anime, she loves uh, writing and reading in WhatsApp, and we have a fun time uh, uh, conversation. Yes, I remember even a friend of, uh, uh, a common friend between us, yes, Khaled Joko, even invited her to speak to me, telling, me, telling her to, to come on, be friendly to, the, he, to him. He, he's, he's very nice, so. Uh, keep, keep talking, <laughs> something like that, yes, and it was, and it made me feel very, very confident in my skills as a, a conversational speaker. Awesome, Ephraim, thank you for sharing. Um, next, I want to, I see that Ishan has raised his hand. Ishan, go ahead, and you can go ahead and unmute and speak. Uh, yes, hi guys, my name is Ishan. Um, so to answer the first question, have you ever been afraid to start a conversation in a quiet room? Uh, you, I used to be that person, but nowadays, especially thanks to CKI, uh, it's allowed me to step out a little bit of my comfort zone and be the one to start that conversation or that icebreaker. Uh, kind of like what, uh, kind of like what uh, Alexandra says she does, but more at the chapter level. Uh, have you ever seen someone sitting alone and wanted to talk to them? Yes, now, uh, yes, uh, I do. Uh, uh. Uh, I do do that, and again, thanks to CKI, which has allowed me to step out of my comfort zone. <laughs> awesome. Thank you so much, Ishan, for sharing that. So that's like, Absolutely. I can definitely relate to that. Uh, I see Steve has raised his hand. Steve, go ahead and you, you can. Steve Lopez. Oh, did you unmute? Okay, so Steve, so Steve has put in the chat. He basically has said, uh, he's been afraid to start a conversation in a quiet room, but and he's often the one who's sitting alone and wants to be talked to, but there are uh, exceptions or times where he's had the courage to uh, initiate conversation. Thank you for sharing, Steve. Uh, I definitely I definitely uh, can feel that as well. Uh, next, I see Amber Liu has raised her hand. Amber, you can go ahead and unmute and speak as well. So, um, can you guys hear me? Yes. Okay, um, there was this one time during a Zoom class where um, it was the first time that the professor was putting us into breakout rooms just to like test if he could put us into breakout rooms. And I saw a friend in there and it was completely silent, but I saw um, one of my friends in there and I was like, hi. Um, and he said hi back. And then I said hi to everybody else because I felt as if I had to continue the conversation since I started it. And then the clo rooms closed and I was so glad because I was like, oh man, I can't continue um, this conversation. So like, I guess it's easy to start, but then sometimes it's like, how do I keep going? It's what I'm scared of. Yeah, I definitely have had a lot of situations where I've hopped into Zoom calls, especially in class, especially in like classroom settings. I'm sure everybody's had their fair share of classroom Zooms now, uh, and they can be very silent and awkward sometimes. So definitely feel that. Uh, probably have time for one or two more. Uh, Josie, I see that you have raised your hand. You can go ahead and unmute and share. Hello, thank you. Um, honestly, I'm not the most um, outgoing person. I'm really shy, honestly. Um, but if uh, I always feel encouraged to talk to friends because um, it might lead to the most meaningful conversations you've had and you may never know 
who you will meet or who you will get to know. Um, just to keep this short and sweet, I just see like strangers are just friends waiting to happen. So just like reach out if you see anybody like alone, they honestly might just want a friend and you might gain a lifetime friend. So yeah, thanks. Yeah, awesome. Thank you for sharing. By the way, just to, I'm gonna call her out. She's actually my club president, Josie. So thank you for so much for sharing. Um, all right, I think that's about all the time we have for that discussion question. So I'd like to pass it off to Al, I think. All right. All right, so find your hashtag CKI for life squad. Uh, so obviously, I guess uh, me, Bill, and Joan have found our squad. But how do you know that this is your squad? Well, like it, a quick answer is that you don't, okay? So like you'll quickly learn that um, you guys don't all click immediately. Like I know, um, like I was around Bill and Jordan, like on the, on the train or whatever it was to get to the service site. But it was just like a bunch of small talk and we really didn't talk that much. We were just around each other. And then it wasn't until like the service site where we were like, um, really like working together in groups, like cleaning up um, that like warehouse we were in to where we actually had to talk some more. And then lunchtime is when we finally like decided, hey, we, we should probably just hang out more. And then um, we just toured like around Chicago together. And so like, um, yeah, so finding your squad, it's a process and it takes time with efforts on both sides. So like you're asking for hanging out, to hang out with people and they're like, also asking you and checking in on you and stuff. So like some strategies is, um, that you can use, like you can look or listen for common interests. So like Bill mentioned earlier, how he just like um, asked about like, like your hair, your interests, your food, and all that stuff. Um, this, is just, this is so you guys can like relate to each other more. And then you guys can keep um, conversations going throughout your time together. Like, you know, cause everyone wants someone to talk to when they're in, like in a new environment. Like I know that was me. Like I was alone, um, like, you know, only only KT person and like only person like in my club there. So I really wanted someone to talk to and I'm glad people did talk to me. <laughs> um, and so in a small talk, yeah, small talk will ease tensions. So like, I'd say if that small talk didn't happen on the train, it would have been like a lot harder to just start like talking to them again at the service site. Cause you just, you know, you never know. Cause like standing, next to someone for like 30 minutes to get to the service site, you, you ought to talk to them and get to know them. Um, but yeah, and like I said, it's like we didn't start warming up um, to each other until like pretty much after CKIX. Cause like, of course we, we had all those fun memories being at like um, one big team, but what really like solidified it was like when we came back after CKIX and like had like um, a Zoom call or whatever we did back then <laughs> and like talked about our experiences and how we like missed each other and everything. So yeah, and since then we've just known each other and we've kept track and now sadly half our squad are like CKI alum now. I think some of them are in this chat. I think Jason and Manuel are here. Um, but yeah, I think we can move on to some discussions and it'll be the same process as we did with Bill so just raise your hand and mute, but like, how do you ask for your contact information to stay in touch? And how do you instigate starting a hangout session? Kanza, Kanza? Hi, uh, I'm Kanza. I'm from the CNH district as well. Hi, Bill. Um, so. I'm a recent grad and it's been a while since I talked with a bunch of my CKI friends and I was just catching up with my little the other day and she's like, oh, one of our other CKI friends um, wants to have like a, a voice chat. So uh, I was like, oh, I'm, I want to talk with her too because it's been a while. So we got together, we, we were chatting over Zoom and then all of a sudden she was like, you know what, I started like a gaming group chat with my friends and we even have like a Discord like set up. So are you interested in playing games with us? We just play random, you know, online games um, that have like popped up over quarantine. So I was like, yeah, I'm interested. And then once I joined, I realized a bunch of my old CKI friends that recently graduated that are still in the club, like they were all in there and we've been talking ever since. And we just come up with a random and missed conversations like in the middle of the night we'll have like a debate <laughs> and it's super fun like um 
yeah, and we'd have random movie nights. So it's just a matter of finding like a common interest, I guess. Um, for us, it was mainly like anime and, you know, um, <laughs> and weird topics like Dino Croc versus Super Gator. What kind of cheese do you like? It, it's so random, but it's so much fun. So I would just suggest, you know, reaching out to friends and maybe creating a group chat or even discords. You know, I know some CKI clubs have created a, like a discord to, you know, play video games and just asking your friends, hey, you want to play like Mafia or Scriblio? <laughs> so, yeah. All right, Chloe from my home district. Hey, Al. Um, so I used to be in the Georgia district. So now I have friends that are pretty far away. Um, not as far as you guys are apart, but still like we can't get together a whole lot. So one way that we stick together is some of us have like similar um, majors. And one of my friends was an English major when I was. so we would get together and we'd talk about like books or we'd have like he'd suggest a movie that I should watch and then we'd get on a call and discuss that and so it's like making sure that your connection goes beyond circle k matters because that can sometimes be a little bit too professional and really making it um, a more personable connection I think is important All right, Al. Okay, so I found myself at a Black Lives Matter protest a couple weeks ago, and I met these two girls while I was there, and we were standing on a corner when some looters broke into a window, and we were like, we should get out of here. So we started walking away together, and uh, as we were walking away, I asked them for their Snapchats, and so we exchanged information, and then I asked them what they were doing for the rest of the night, and they told me they had no plans. So I said, why don't we sit down and talk and get to know each other? And we ended up talking for three hours, got to know each other really well. And then last week we went to the Terrace, which is like an outdoor eating sitting area here in Madison. And it was really nice. It worked out just like a simple being in the same place at the same time and asking for their contact info. All right, uh, Josie. Hi. Um, so like around a year ago, I studied abroad in South Korea. I met lots of people globally from like to England to like Latin America to Vietnam to everywhere. So aside from like keeping in touch via video and uh, messages, um, we started a traveling notebook where um, some one of my friends in uh, uh, Norway uh, started a notebook and wrote like whatever she wanted and also sent that to the next person along with some things from Norway so I find that really cool like um, starting a trolley notebook that would go all over the world um, probably a good idea and for CKI friends who are, are kind of uh, far apart uh, to keep in touch with each other I know just uh, traditional writing and even just receiving some snacks or something from um, where you're from or anything is a great uh, thing to do. So just throwing that idea out there. It's uh, pretty great. Yeah. Cool. All right. I think we have time for like our two more people. So uh, Josephine. Uh, so I'm sure you guys can all relate to this, but a lot of times like when you talk with people you want to hang out with, like, oh my gosh, we should totally hang out sometime. Like, oh my gosh. And you always talk about it, but it never actually happened. And I think one of the best ways to kind of move past that is to specifically ask like, what, like, what's your work schedule? Like, when are you free? Um, or like um, Al, a Alexandra said earlier, like she asked, ask the girls like what do you have planned do you have any plans for the rest of today um, and then from there you can actually specifically be like oh okay tonight we're gonna do this later this week we'll do that and yeah all right uh Grishma okay uh hello everyone I'm Grishma from Sikyai Nepal and whenever I hear this long distance friendship in Sikyai like it's truly amazing like to us because um in our country we are the one and only CKI and even 
we don't find any CKI near to our country. Like, we don't even find any CKI. So we are the one and only, we feel like that. But uh, since, to, uh, until today, like, Whoever we have met from CKI, everyone uh, we met virtually only. Like, <laughs> so whenever I hear the word uh, long distance friendship, then I think we, we had a lot of experience. And, and uh, I think two, it's been two months like uh, we got uh, into the CKI and like we have been able to maintain the CKI friendship. And the, the first, I remember the first friends we met were from Panama during an award ceremony and uh, and yeah like it's truly awesome to meet uh, different people from different countries from different CKI and yeah that's it. <laughs> I completely agree it's really fun meeting all these new people from like all over the nation and the world so um, and you guys all had amazing stories to tell too so Jordan? Hey yo. Cool. So now we're going to talk a little bit about maintaining these friendships that you make. So how do you stay in contact with all these people from like, you know, hundreds of miles away? So here's some of our favorite activities that we do. Um, we just kind of like, honestly, we just kind of randomly call each other up for like video call and then we just do like life updates. Um, most of our best times come from just things that aren't even scheduled to where we're like talking to each other, playing a game. Um, we do like deep, meaningful conversations. We play um, scrib scribble. I don't scribble. I o. I don't know if you're not supposed to pronounce that last part or not, but I still do it in the back of my head. Uh, random video calls. Um, those like Facebook video chat games. You can like play games on the little video chat now. I don't know if you've been able to do. It. They're super fun, even though they go kind of slow. <laughs> um, Jackbox games and just like randomly talking about just like y'all said like what's your favorite cheese or just getting together to talk about random things so what are some of y'all's favorite activities that y'all do to stay in touch with people that you've met and we're just gonna like do the hand raising thing Chloe? My friends and I do um, categories sometimes online. Have y'all done that? What's category? Okay, so it's like this thing where you'll get online and you'll make like a room on categories online.net and you pick categories and then it'll give you a letter and you have to type them in within like 30 seconds. and it's just like a fun competition and you can do it remotely. So. Oh my God, 30 seconds, the pressure is on. <laughs> Thank you for sharing. Caitlin? Caitlin, where you at? Um, I think I would say um, there was one time um, I was doing on a Zoom hangout with a few friends of mine from Emporia and we ended up doing like a like a little movie night thing and um even though the movie was kind of um oh I don't know how you say it like kind of scattered a little bit cuz um the Wi-Fi would be kind of crazy but it was a lot of fun and um going back to the Facebook um video chat games I had saw um I had saw like a group online like they did like a Facebook live video and they actually played Family Feud and it was actually really fun getting to watch that so yeah thank you for sharing Joanne hello hello uh, I don't know if everyone can hear me but uh, one of my favorite things to do with friends that's super far away is just even just having Snapchat streaks, you know, like just be like, hey, this reminds me of you. I'm going to just send you a picture of my food or my dog or something. Um, that's something that I love doing um, with almost anybody. That's why I almost see, like I add anybody on Snapchat almost that for that reason. Um, but that's one of my favorite things to do for a friend that's super far away. 
the ultimate love language saying something reminds you of someone so wholesome thank you for sharing austin yeah so uh one of my favorite things that i do is uh you know it's always hard to find the time to always meet up so my big thing is, is you're always going to have to eat so just making it so that you're going to order the same food from Chipotle. Be like, yeah, we're all going to order Chipotle today. We're going to have a Chipotle thing and we're all going to eat the same thing or we're all going to hang out and just have dinner together because, you know, on Sunday nights, that's what I do. I call um, Steph, uh, immediate past Governor Steph Flo uh, from Southwest on Sunday nights and we just go over what's going on in our week. But we always just do it over dinner because we're always busy. So, you know, it's kind of a nice thing where it kind of something you already do and I know a lot of us just kind of just sit there anyways in our apartments dorms and wherever kind of sometimes have to eat by ourselves but it's nice to be able to be you know even if you are thousands of miles apart you can just eat dinner with someone thank you for sharing oh my gosh I feel so called out I do that all the time <laughs> sitting alone in my apartment eating <laughs> Okie dokie. I don't see any more hands, so I'm just going to go ahead and pass it on to basically all of the hosts to just say thank you so much for coming to our workshop and sharing with us. So um, you can see on the side, this is basically just cute little pictures of us and our information. So that's this is how you can contact us on social media and our, our emails and stuff. So I'll leave this up for a bit if y'all just want to like, I don't know, take a picture of us because we're cute or contact us, follow us on social media. Um, and then we can just kind of like do some icebreakers cause we got some time. So, you know. Bill, Al, y'all got something to say? Uh, I just wanted to say thank you all for coming. Thank you all for um, talking, I guess. Uh, for the people who, uh, I, who have, the people who raised their hands and helped discuss, I really appreciate that. Because uh, it would be it would be five minutes of silence if nobody actually raised their hands to say anything. But I appreciate that a lot. Yeah, just same. I wanted to say thank you for coming to support our workshop and seeing some familiar faces too that I've met over the years at CKI. Um, but yeah, you guys should keep in touch with us, and I hope I hope to see you guys like actually in person next year, wherever CKI takes us. someone has a link for a group up to 64 let's do it let's play a game Hold on, wait. Wait. it's like it's IO. oh yeah yeah question yeah yeah um because something that i really struggle with is that like i would get somebody's contact information or something like that or they'd offer like their social media and i just don't know like how would anybody in this sort of session like start up a conversation after having like meeting them getting their contact information and just kind of continuing on chloe you raise your hand yeah i try to make sure to get pictures with people so that way i have to be like oh here's this picture that we had together isn't that so fun remember this thing you said let's talk about that more and like just slowly put more things about myself and about them in the chat Uh, personally, how I combat this is I personally uh, ask them questions, just random questions. Like, uh, I personally ask them really, really dumb questions. Like, I will ask them, hey, would you rather fight a hundred duck-sized humans or one human-sized duck and force them to answer? Uh, and it basically just stimulates conversation. Um, it's like such an out, it's such an egregious and outlandish question that it just kind of like throws people off. But it also like, like why would you ask this? So I'm just curious. I just want to know what, what your stance is on that. So um, just um, ask, just honestly, just ask questions or ask them like how they've been as well. Uh, it's always, always try to try to do. I try to like say something that can elicit a response essentially. Yep. And if you've got like someone's socials like from a workshop and stuff. Like, like us, I guess, you can just start your conversation by like saying, hey, I really enjoyed your workshop or something. It was really insightful or whatever. And then like, I mean, we'll talk back to you because I think I, I think we're all expecting like to make some new connections from this too. Can I take a picture with everyone in it real quick? Yeah, let's take a picture. Okay. All right. <laughs> 
I'll do it. You can only fit like 25 to 30 people in like one of the, the your frames. Yeah. Okay. So I'll take a first frame and then I'll try to go to all three. Okay. One, two, three. Okay. I'm going to do the second frame now. <laughs> okay. One, two, three. Sweet. And the third. One, two, three. Gee. Awesome. <laughs> All right, I got you all. Let's see how that goes. I'll post it on the Kiwanis app. Awesome. Thank, thank you. you. Uh, anybody else have any more questions or like discussion they'd like to talk about real quick? Can I comment? Yeah, of course. So one of the things I do to keep maintain friendship is like on my social media, I play, I post like random trivia or facts about like Kiwanis circuit best circuit experience man bow, and I got. Even back in my Circle K days, and now even as an alumni and into my Quantus days, people tend to know, like, get engaged and come together. They were able to answer all my trivia questions. It's mainly about Circle K final or, or some search project that I did. So just a way I have to maintain the good friendship. Awesome. Thank you so much for sharing, Eugene. Something and that I do always, oh, sorry. Something no that I do always, uh, like even with friends I already have, I'll send them just random memes and or gifts or TikToks or something, and that usually gets a conversation going because it it's usually something that we already possibly relate to. Um, like I know last summer when I met people, I would find some memes that was related to Circle K, um, or like if they didn't follow the CKI Facebook page. Uh, uh, the CKI memes Facebook page, I would just send them memes off of there and then the conversation would go from there. So. Awesome. Thank you so much. Um, yeah. Um, anybody else? Uh, yeah. Al says, keep in touch with us. I would like to keep in touch with everybody. Uh, so if anybody wants to, you know, add any of us on social media, you're more than welcome to. Um, we will try to keep in touch with everybody. It's a lot of us. It is a lot of us in here. So, um, yeah. Um, this workshop technically ends at 2.45, so we're here for about four more minutes. So if anybody else has anything to add, or we can hop into the sketchboard room that Caitlin had, um, has set up for us, that's totally fine as well.